Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and something new, something totally exciting, and totally by surprise. What's in the box? Everything's gonna fall out, isn't it? It's a 4S Whoop. This is called the ET Max. Now this is a brand new quad from King Kong. This is given us to by King Kong to us for free for a demo. This is the working prototype. We think we don't run that sure. Um, came with very um, bare information. Matter of fact, you got an email a little while ago with the, all the specs. And um, but I can tell you, it's in a common a brown box. That's about all I can tell you for sure. Right, I'll say um, 80. Um, we have a sale on aisle uh, four. <laughs> So something <laughs> fell in the background. Oops. So all right. So in this video, we're gonna open up. We're gonna take it apart. We're gonna go over the components, and we're gonna give you a little teaser, and um, get your thoughts on what do you think. Yep. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> wow! Look at the difference in size. Now look at the difference. In size. But wait, it looks almost the same size. Wow. Get closer. <laughs> All right, well, excited about this one. Uh, this is something new from King Kong that's not in a plastic box. It's in a cardboard box. Mm. Oh, Holy shit! That okay. is ginormous! Um, <laughs> that so thing is so... The shrink ray went backwards, and uh, yeah, this is a big-ass quad. Um, so, so, unboxing, there it is. All right, so that is a 115. Oh my gosh! Holy... That is ginormous. I, I want to drop one of these from this thing. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah. So, yeah. For those of you that have the 115, there's a little reference point right there. There's a, a little bigger. That um, is ginormous. I so, mean, that thing is huge. What's the actual measurements of this thing here? Motor to motor 185. It looks like. Yep. That's what they call in the specs. All right. So this is a 185. Um, it's a true X. It's got the guards, the same, really, actually, really nice plastic material there. Um, similar type body. So, weight wise, I can't really, I can't really can see it. Uh, 298. 284.8. Here it is. 284.8. It's huge. So, anyways, let's go over the specs. All right, so. On this guy, it has a 1200 TV line CMOS camera, so I'm thinking that it's basically like a Caddx ESO2 camera. Um, there's no branding on it, but I think King Kong is working with Caddx now, so maybe it's an OEM version of it. Who knows? Uh, it's a 2.1 millimeter lens. Uh, yeah. Um, it has a... 1200 TV, I'll you say that. 1200 TV line, yep. yeah. Um, the antenna is either RPS, probably RPSMA, it could be SMA, but this antenna, the little rubber ducky, is threaded in to an SMA adapter. So if you do end up breaking this, guess what? You can just unscrew it and change it. So, so regular, yeah, you don't have antenna. to desolder it. Yeah. But at the same time, this extension is also a UFL connector. So if you want to change to a lollipop or something like that, it's just popping off a UFL and changing so it out. Back to standard FPV gear, if you want to call it yep. that. Uh, it's a 20 by 20 flight stack. So the 20 by 20 flight stack. This is the F4 flight controller. Um, so we've got F4 with Betaflight OSD, which is nice because Betaflight OSD is good to have. Um, the Now the VTX on this is not like the Q100 VTX. This is a stacked VTX. Um, it has, I believe it has smart audio on it. We'll have to check that uh, later on. But it has a uh, pit mode, uh, 2500 and 200 milliwatt functions on it so you can select the power on it okay um, so this is not like the 115 this is a almost like a traditional standard yeah this is GTX. more like the uh 220 trainer okay kind of the motors are 2204 they're not branded but um i believe the little paper we had here said 2250 kb so that's good for three cell or four cell wait a minute four cell oh yeah it's a four inch quad four cell whoop Oh crap, here we go again. Well, ah, why did I do that? <laughs> It'll fly fine on three cell, probably be at the limit of the ESCs on four cell, so I wouldn't go too aggressive on props um, if you do run aftermarket props. Now, speaking of props, is that like, can you have to run special props or can you run any kind of dowel or? Um, I think the only thing you're gonna run into is if some aftermarket props, the hubs might be too tall and you might okay. not get that prop. So it is just it. a regular motor. There's not anything specific to this yeah. type. Now they are using clockwise, counterclockwise prop nuts. 
Um, and these are the that. traditional acorn nuts instead of the uh, little okay. hex nuts. So that's so you can tell the black one goes one direction, and the silver one goes in the other direction. And if you do get this and change your props, don't turn the props the wrong way because then the shaft will snap. Yeah. That's um, how we know. I'm sure these are our aluminum shaft motors. They look almost like an older Eachine motor. They kind of remind me of the older Eachine motors, but the mag the bearings are very smooth. So um, kind of like the original Wizard motors, but just All right. smoother. Let's open this guy up and check everything out. All right. So let me right. take this guy apart. So it's three screws, three Phillips head screws. So we're gonna take it apart before we ever fly it or anything like yep. that. And that's the way to do it. Right? We live it dangerously. All right. It does have a rear LED? I can see that it's got a little plastic cover with LED. So while Will's doing that, let me talk about the XT60. This is the Amos they call that, and this is actually not a um, knockoff or a aftermarket or what do you want to call it copy. It's the real deal and they were the first to make the xt60 is that correct yeah that was the company that designed the xt60 right. so it's it's good um it's a high heat nylon it's not going to warp and all that and it's got the good bullet connectors in it back in the day when they used to have airplane connectors some of them were not copied very well and they were very bad okay now one thing i'm going to say taking this off i kind of hope they do a slightly longer cable for the uh camera otherwise you got to unbolt the camera from the top uh without stretching that wire because it's kind of tight okay we are gonna Unplug it there. So you heads up, make sure you unplug the cable. Yeah, and I'm trying to see what we got going here because it's not letting me pick it up. So oh it looks like okay, so we got I'm gonna unplug the LED and buzzer as well. No, that's not really what's holding me up here. It's oh it's just the coax cable, but I can't get this in. The coax me and the antenna, right? Well oh, the cable down here. Sorry. Okay. Alright, so okay. ran that through a little bit. Um, so just where do you unplug the camera and then the I just unplug the camera, but we're just gonna move it to the side We're not gonna take it off completely. So now you can see uh, There's a button for the VTX right there. So it comes with plug and play you mentioned that earlier So that means you can put your own receiver in there. Yeah, and so you'll be able to unplug this guy right here Here and then switch it out to any other cable kind of like uh, I don't know something we got over here that we did for one of the other stacks um, that goes to an RXSR. So basically no soldering, plug that in. So yeah, you'll be able to do there. a no solder install for okay. either Spectrum, if you get a satellite like the 4648 receiver or a free sky with the RXSR. Wow, that's huge. And there's plenty of room in there for a satellite. That's yeah, a you can. Plenty of room. This is one of the few that you can actually install a Spectrum without being struggling for space. Right. Um, All right, so how's it, it looks like it's got those little rubber grommets like the yeah. T has. Yeah. And then where's the VTX right on top? And it's got VTX is on top. Now we actually had some questions before. They just ran the wire, as you can see, uh, over and around. Out and, and up around. And yeah. Up. Yeah. So it's nothing. Let's see that uh, connector right there on the um, yeah. show, buddy. So it's so tell us. So this is a SMA antenna. So if you want to change it out there, you can, or pop that off, uh, run a different antenna. But you might want to get some kind of silicone yeah. RTV to hold. So if those who want to upgrade your antenna, boom. There yep, two different ways of doing it. So you already, if you already have an SMA antenna laying around, awesome. Um, if not, then you can do UFL as well. Yep. Easiest way would be that way for me. So, yep. all right, so it looks pretty clean. Um, the one thing you mentioned earlier off camera was the motor wires. Let's oh yeah, well, that. one thing real all quick, right. adjustable camera tilt. Oh yeah, look at that. So it is on a little separate block and it looks like it. this little bracket is replaceable. So if you crash and break it, I guess maybe you can get that part separately. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can adjust the camera tilt pretty good amount. Now I see those same wires going straight there. What this is, is the buzzer wire. Okay, right so there. it has the buzzer right. um, and the LEDs right here. So you have the little multicolor LED, programmable LED, as well as the buzzer, just like you have on the 115. So basically it's this, everything, this is the same thing. There's nothing other than, you know, upgraded electronics. Buzzer, the LED, they just, oh my gosh, they just crazy size. This uh, is almost big as one, whoop. Yeah. So all right, while you putting that back together, can you multitask and tell us yeah, those motor yeah. wires? So the motor wires, this is where I'm not, I'm gonna have to pick on this a little bit. Um, the 2204 motors, these are definitely, um, 
I guess you'd say lower end motors. I don't think they're going to be like super powerful or anything like that. Um, they're nothing like you've seen from Sunny Sky or the Diatones or anything like in that 2204 class. Um, not even as good as the, tw the 2306s they had on their other series. Um, I think originally this quad was intended for the 1806 Sunny Sky motors, but they did this to reduce cost because the price point on this thing is going to be really good. Um, but in order to save cost, they had to go with a cheaper style motor. So these motors are going to be less powerful, less amp hungry at the same time. So it's going to be better for the ESCs, better for durability. Um, but these are not silicone wires. These are like the um, PVC coated wire. Ooh. So I think these are going to be the ones, I don't know if they're going to be enamel coated all the way up to where it's going to be hard to solder if you ever cut the wire short or anything like that. Um, but I would like to see silicone wires running through just that way it's nicer wiring. Right. Um, the other thing I had a complaint on was the whole pattern here, these are milled for uh, the, the larger screws and they're running M2 screws in there. The problem with that is they kind of, they have slop in there because they're not tied up in, in there. So I could see those possibly in a hard crash, possibly even shearing off. Um, Again, on, this on is a prototype, on, so yeah. we don't know if this is... So, but it has two of the holes are for the larger screws and two of the holes are only for smaller screws within. So I'm wondering if maybe these are just pre-production motors and they went from an 1806, they're going to go to a 2204. Um, it was the change here, but they just did one-off motors for this because these motors aren't labeled or anything like that. Um, if you look at the motor, there's literally three letters on it. I don't see King Kong doing that. That's Y Y V Y U something. Yeah. Or so a I'm slash a slash Y U U. Yeah. So I'm thinking these motors are probably just one-off motors at this point. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from the OEM manufacturer, but- um, It's all I, speculation. Though. Yeah, that's pure speculation. The frame looks to be four millimeters thick, I would say. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty strong enough, strong enough for this kind of platform mm -hmm. and all that. Well, I can't wait. So where does the battery go in this guy? On the bottom. On the bottom. It's gonna Velcro down. So, oh, it looks like you have to put some kind of a wire or a battery strap. Yeah, you just run it underneath the flight stack and around. Oh yeah, camera's right here. Yeah, right. so nothing, nothing fancy on okay. that. Um, and the, the manual calls for 1500 3S to 2200 4S, somewhere in 2204 range. cell. Well, it could go from 15 to, to 22, 3 or 4. So I thought it was 13 to 15. You want to verify that? All right, so the only thing I would say is if you're going to run a 2200, um, boom, don't, don't get too aggressive on it because it's going to be that's gonna be heavy, heavy. It's gonna be heavy, and the motors will run hot. So I guess this is for the first time we have a pretty wide. Uh, battery size that we can go 15 to 2200 that's a pretty big difference in in size yeah in terms of I mean, that's... I mean you can make this a cruising quad or you can kind of freestyle a little bit with it if you want it um, so yeah I mean this is a not a five inch it's close to the size of a five inch because of the guards so it's four inch props but more along the size of a five inch quad but in the the whoop style with the guards and all that and what made the ET such a great quad now and a bigger size so I think this is gonna be good. Uh, I like the VTX is 200 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt, 25 milliwatt, or pit mode, um, 48 channel, great smart audio, even better. 20 um, ESCs, 100, bigger ESC, TVO, it's F4 flight controller, CMOS camera. Yeah, I mean the camera. I think the camera is gonna be decent for what it is, but you can always put a micro swift. It's a standardized camera, so, so you can put you anything can in there. It. You can always upgrade this camera. So yeah. this, you could probably. Uh, I don't want to say it out loud, but can you put probably put a mini split or a turtle or something like that. I could see this getting there's a, a mini split. plenty of room in there. Yeah, there's plenty of room for a mini split. King Kong has stressed many times to me that this is a quad designed for beginners. If you're a guy who's already power looping um, buildings and stuff on a you know alien frame or whatever, this is probably not for you. But if you're a guy who's has that smaller quad, who wants to go up to a five inch quad without killing yourself, the bank, or you know a lot of expensive gear, yeah. um, and you still are hitting things, um, this will be well. This might be a good trainer, and just right off the bat, just something to throw out there. It might clear five-inch props without the guards on it, possibly. If it can, this would be a great frame. Okay, you get it, you fly it, you enjoy it, tear up motors, but you're not really crashing that much anymore. Buy a new set of motors, upgrade a set of motors, throw uh, five-inch props on it without the guards on it, and better motors, and you still got a it's nice a good. Quad. It's a good platform to learn to experiment all that good stuff without spending a lot of money on. It. And a lot of complicated time that uh, it would take to build a bigger and more fancier quad. As I, I think the biggest thing for this is going to be possibly putting a mini split in it. Honestly, it's got a lot of room in there. Um, 
I think running either the Caddx Turtle or a Mini Split. Or the new Foxier or something, whatever it's called. Yeah. And gotta go. So realistically, I'm not trying to knock the motors that much here. They're very smooth. These are super smooth bearings in this thing. I'm impressed with it. I can just tell that these are like the lower performing motors as far as they're thrust cheaper. performance. <laughs> yeah, they're cheaper magnets and all that. Unless to keep the cost point down. So these are like older generation motors. They're not going to be like top of the line motors. So don't expect like mad ridiculous amounts of thrust per motor on this thing. Um, I think this was just designed again to be more of a beginner trainer quality. They had cost. Yeah. There's a fine line of cost and performance, and you got there. Where's that point of where you hit that that the point of no return? No one really knows. So I guess with this one, they figured let's keep cheap motors. I think that's a better decision than getting something without OSD or without Smart Audio. Or something yeah, like that. I mean feature-wise, this quad's got every, all the boxes checked and all that. I just think the motors definitely. I'd love to see a better motor on this. Yeah. Not necessarily smoother quality-wise or anything. Like, just better, like the silicone wires quality-wise. Yeah. I think that's always a nice thing to have and um, a regular hole pattern with the, M, the, the larger screws. Right. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think paying an extra 15 bucks or so for a higher end performing quad is worth it? Or do you think the price point is more important than something like this? Leave us some comments below what, what you think and uh, we'll pass those along to King Kong because they are work with us a lot. And should they ditch the counter rotating, uh, the counterclockwise threads and all that and just go locking thread? Oh yeah, just like um, Lock basically everything. All around. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's something I would consider too on that just to make for the ease of everything set up because you got plenty of room to hold the motor. Right. So. Make sure you subscribe because next time we're going to fly it on 400 or a, make sure you subscribe because next time we're going to fly it on a 4S, 3S, 1500, 1800, 2200, all that good stuff. And we're probably going to show you how to mount your receiver where you put it. Sound good? Let's all do it. right.